Dear friends, welcome to this question-answer series presented by Dr. Johnson C. Philip. Dr. Philip has spent his whole life answering young and old on an unbelievably wide range of subjects. His ultimate aim is to help you to find answers to your questions and even doubts. In turn this will help you in multiple ways. Dr. Philip keeps posting question answers regularly. Many of these can be very helpful to you. Do not miss any of them. Please subscribe to our channel and you will get notice of each and every video as it is posted. It is easy to subscribe. Below this video you will see a subscribe icon. Please click it. Please also click to bell icon there to confirm your subscription. That is all. You will never miss any of these life transforming videos. God bless you. I thank God for this evening that he has granted to us to have a wonderful time studying the scripture and br when brother richard paul was praying i suddenly realized he covered so many important things about uh, our understanding of the scripture and he particularly mentioned a large number of areas where we keep on being influenced very heavily by wrong teachings by wrong influences thank you brother for that prayer it's right actually when there is something genuine there are a thousand duplicates When the Christian faith started 2000 years ago, a lot and lot and lot of people realized, man, this is surely profitable if you know how to tap into it. And many of them started all kinds of parallel movements. The answer to all this, what to do, what to do, when, false ideas, buffet you. When false ideas keep on influencing your mind. And the answer is, know the truth. Is it enough to know the truth? And the answer is, no. It is not enough to know the truth. Number one, you should know the truth. Number two, you should also spend some time to study that which is not true. So, we started our study of Bibliology last week and suddenly I reminded all of you that just because somebody says he believes in the Bible, it doesn't mean that he is a Bible believing person. And you may say, brother, what are you saying? There are a lot of people, they claim that uh, they believe in the Bible. Are they not speaking the truth? And the answer is, no, they are not speaking the truth. They are speaking something completely false. And last week, I started telling you about the false varieties of Christianity because people who belong to the false variety they also claim that they believe in the Bible, they follow the Bible, but they don't follow it at all. So in this class, we will study the truth as well as the falsehood. I mentioned a number of streams of people who call themselves as Christians. Number one, ritualistic Christians. Number two, radical Christians. Number three, neo-orthodox Christians. 
നമ്പർ ഫോർ നിയോ ഇവാഞ്ചലിക്കൽ ക്രിസ്ത്യൻസ് ഫൈവ് ഇവാഞ്ചലിക്കൽ ക്രിസ്ത്യൻസ് സിക്സ് കൺസർവേറ്റീവ് ഓർ ഫണ്ടമെന്റലിസ്റ്റ് ക്രിസ്ത്യൻസ് and you may once again say my goodness brother johnson so many categories and the answer is yes where there is an entity that is popular people immediately make copies because making a copy is cheaper and the profit is very high let me give you a practical example first to make myself clear many of you who are younger you may have heard about the british silver rupee the older ones they have heard about british velli cash you also have heard or you have even seen chakrams even today a lot of malayalis keralites older keralites who are settled in singapore when they talk about their currency they don't say dollar malayali say 10 silvers 10 velli do you know why because when the british ruled india and countries in the east and west they tried to impose a uniform currency all over these areas and that uniform currency was british silver rupee may not be very clear to you because it is silver but i hope some of you can recognize the picture of queen victoria on it this is british silver rupee when india became free in 1947 india demonetized it and once it was demonetized that currency went out of circulation and now this british india rupee has become a collector's item it is made of 11 grams of pure silver 11 grams of silver in today's market would cost about uh, 700 rupees but the market value of this coin is 1400 rupees why because there are tens of thousands of people all over india and also in many european countries who collect coins just the way people collect stamps these people collect coins and therefore prices always rise in proportion to demand so there is more demand for these coins than the number of coins available so though it has only 700 rupees worth of silver the cost of the coin in coins market is 1400 rupees and a lot of people realized that hey that's great we can easily make um dice and we can easily buy silver particularly old silver in bulk and we can easily cast by casting we can make these coins for 600 rupees and we can sell them for 800 rupees so on each 
tiny piece, you make a neat profit of 200 rupees. And today, in the Indian coins market, for every genuine British India rupee, there are 10 forgeries. You may ask, how do you know? Well, I am a forgery expert. I am a coin forgery expert. That is an area of my expertise. So I know. For every single genuine coin, there are 10 fake coins in the market. You may say, what is the result? The result is, you go to the coins market and British India coins are now available for 800 rupees and every new collector thinks that he is getting a loot. Something that should cost 1400, I am able to buy for 800. So if he went to buy 10, he buys 20 and comes home without realizing that he has been cheated. Because even today, genuine coins certified by a forgery expert will cost 1400. Genuine ones are still selling for 1400. After a coin, forgery expert certifies that a certain coin is genuine. The same thing has happened within the Christian faith. Once the Christian faith came in AD 30, the day of Pentecost, lot of people realize that wow this is profitable business look at the apostles people are selling their property and laying at the feet of the apostles so if i can start a parallel church and if i declare myself to be an apostle people will bring money and lay at my feet and i can keep a portion for myself and keeping a portion for myself is something that started with Achan. I hope you remember Achan in the Old Testament when they went to Ai and then Gehazi and then Judas. This is not a recent phenomenon. The moment the church started people started making imitations of the real thing and there is one epistle it's a very brief epistle but the entire epistle focuses on this one subject of fakes in the church and that is the epistle of jude let me announce here that uh, after about uh, one year of work, the epistle on Jude is uh, done. It is in final editing stages and Lord willing, it would be available for purchase mid-February. Thanks to everyone who prayed for this project. Please continue to pray for our uh, Bible commentary projects. Uh, multiple books are getting ready. This one will be initially, it will be in English, but Hindi is getting ready because of Sister Dora who is in this group. Meanwhile, um, eschatology, Bhavigala Shastra in Malayalam is getting ready. Lot of things are getting ready. Bible Survey Volume 2 is getting ready. And if there is anyone here who has not been able to buy Bible Survey, uh, in my next class, I will tell you how to buy uh, how to buy it. It is a 600-page hardbound book done by me and Dr. Sanish Chiria. Thanks once again for your support in all these projects. I mentioned it incidentally because of Jude. Jude, though it is only 25 verses, the commentary typed is about 250 pages why so long 
because jude has packed so much information about fake forgeries and jude was produced around 60 ad church started in 30 ad and in 30 years the forgery of the church or duplicate of the church became such a heavy problem think of the situation 2000 years from today another 8 uh, years and it will be 2020 years since uh, or 2010 years since the church started oh uh, no another 8 uh, years and it will be 2000 full years since the church started how much more degeneration might have taken place as a result the new testament church has many duplicates one is the ritualistic church the other is the radical church the third is the neo orthodox church the fourth is the neo evangelical church the fifth one is the evangelical church and the sixth one the genuine one the real one is conservative and fundamentalist so i am sure now it is clear to you why i spend so much time to explain uh, to give a, a fast explanation of why we are looking at the duplicate varieties of the genuine church of all these six i mentioned the ritualistic church in my last class for the ritualistic church bible is only a book full of rituals please remember there were many rituals in the old testament but bible is not a book full of rituals particularly the new testament church is a time of a period when god has done away with rituals he has given to ordinances the baptism and lord supper and they are not rituals they are ordinances and there are no rituals at all in the new testament which are the ritualistic church you may ask number 1 the roman catholics number 2 the eastern orthodox they are found mostly in uh, russia and such areas with some links here in kerala such as the chaldean syrian church so roman catholics eastern orthodox chaldean syrian and then what is known as the orthodox church in kerala and also what is known as the jacobite church in kerala there is also a small faction from orthodox jacobites sometimes people call them reeth though that is not the correct title they are a branch of the jacobite church or orthodox church which has joined the roman catholic church and the pope is their head but other than that they have maintained their autonomy all of these churches are ritualistic rituals 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 relation with christ is not mentioned not taught they do not believe in salvation by grace through faith they believe in salvation by human works in other words they are no different from islam or hinduism or buddhism or jainism or any other religion any other non christian religion these non christian religions teach salvation by works and these uh, branches of christianity also teach salvation through good works and please remember in ritualistic churches they consider bible as a book 
which is full of error they do not consider bible as the inerrant without error infallible that means it is unchallengeable they do not consider bible as the inerrant and infallible word of god verbal inspiration the doctrine that even the very word is there because the holy spirit wanted it there no that is completely alien to them they do not believe in such fundamental doctrines and please remember they claim to be christians and when they claim to be christians we should discern we should understand that they are christians only in title but they do not by, believe or accept the bible to be the word of god they do not uh, accept the the inerrancy and infallibility of the bible they do not accept that bible is uh, verbally inspired by the holy spirit and they believe that the bible is full of error i say this with great emphasis because i keep on bumping into people who ask me brother johnson we also teach theology they also teach theology and i sometimes feel so frustrated are these brethren so ignorant we also teach they also teach theology so it and it is one and the same saying that is the same as we also believe in god they also believe in god i i'm talking about say muslims they believe in one god we believe in one god muslims also believe in one god sikhs also believe in one god and in fact sikhism when sikhs greet each other they say sat shri akal the meaning is only the eternal is true that's so biblical so we also believe in one god muslims also believe in one god and uh, sikhs also believe in one god and therefore we are all believers in one god one and the same god it is a similar kind of teaching when somebody says oh catholics also teach theology protestants also teach theology and therefore we all teach one and the same thing when we study bibliology the first thing to understand is that not all of them believe the same thing about the bible and not all of them believe what the bible speaks about itself i had a classic example about 20 years ago yeah about 22 years ago when i was vice principal of brethren bible institute patanandita i became principal later for 3 years one brother came with a candidate for admission he was a roman catholic he was studying for roman catholic uh, brotherhood and uh, this uh, brethren guy had shared the gospel he accepted christ and now he wanted to go to a protestant bible school so i said yes we can give admission so that he studies the word of god uh, let me have the application and everything but then this brother put a condition he already studied for theology for two years in a catholic seminary so you have to give admission to the third year in brethren bible institute i said brother what do you mean and his question was you also teach theology catholics also teach theology so what is the difference i hit the roof don't uh, have we become so foolish such idiots that we don't understand that the word theology does not mean the same thing to a brethren 
or to an independent or fundamental baptist or to a person from one of the local churches what we mean by theology roman catholics don't mean the same by theology i had to inform him that as a matter of policy we never give direct admission to anybody in third year and i said if a person has had two years in a roman catholic seminary then we will give admission only in the first year because whatever brainwashing has been done that has to be dewashed deprogrammed and therefore he has to study from first year this brother was angry with me and he said i will see to it that he gets admission in third year in a brother and bible seminary he then took this brother to another brother and bible institute the principal and directors were very knowledgeable they said nothing doing if you want we will give admission in first year finally he was admitted in first year within 6 months he was kicked out this brother again used his influence to get him admitted in another brother and seminary they also said only first year and everywhere he was boasting i have two years of theology but he did not know the abc of the bible and after 6 months they also kicked him out for some time he was a brother and evangelist but everywhere that he went he created such a bad name because he never had studied bible in a roman catholic seminary for the first two years they don't even touch the bible they say they are teaching theology they don't touch even touch the bible and we are so ignorant of these things that we when we talk about theology we think everybody is teaching the same so so much detail in relation to roman catholics is with a purpose that will clear become clear later as we study this subject so the first category of christians is ritualistic and when they speak about the bible they don't mean that bible is the word of god even if they say bible is the word of god they de- really don't mean what you and i mean or what the bible means when it says that it is the word of god category number 2 radicals a radical means a person who denies everything an anarchist malayalam arajagatvavadi or tirutalvadi he does not accept anything radical also claims that he is a christian that he is studying theology and that he respects the bible but ask him in greater detail and he will say well when i say bible is the word of god what i mean is that uh, there are religious books in all religions muslims have quran and uh, the persians have avesta and people of every religion have their own books in the same way bible is also just another a religious book and that is what i mean that bible is the word of god you ask him a little further and he will say well uh, bible is like any other religious book but uh i want to tell you that compared to many other books bible is a bad book i have personally heard many theological radicals saying that compared to bhagavad gita bible is a bad book now here i don't want to bring bhagavad gita as a subject of our study 
but i want to remind you that the theological radical for them when he says that bible is the word of god what he means is that every religion has books which claims to be the word of god bible is like any any of them may be a little worse than some of them you press the radical a little more and they will say ki listen uh the bible is full of errors the bible is full of contradictions you press them a little bit more and they will say bible is not really the word of god well christians uh, accept it i am a christian so i also accept it that's all it is not really the word of god you press them a little bit more and they will say bible contains a lot of errors of science and god really did not create man man is a product of evolution and all this idea of adam and eve and uh, sin is a myth there is nothing like uh, adamic sin and uh, they they say salvation by grace through faith well that is a lot of stupidity uh, everybody gets salvation through his works wow you may say are there christians like that yes there are a lot of christians like that radical christians are found among roman catholics among orthodox among jacobites and also among marthomites i still remember when i was in madhya pradesh gwalior and uh, in gwalior the lot a lot of marthomites who eventually became members of the marthoma church initially when they did not have a church they used to come and attend worship with us they were free uh, to witness everything but since they were a lot of them were not born again or baptized they were not supposed to partake in the lord's supper but they were welcome to sit throughout the program and many of them sat and enjoyed eventually when the marthoma church started in gwalior uh, a lot of marthoma priests who came there they became very friendly with us because of these earlier links one of them once saw a book that i had written the title of the book is bible and modern science that book is out of print he saw bible and modern science and he said hey uh, i thought that you were a doctorate in theology and you are working towards your doctorate in science how is it that you believe that bible is uh, scientifically accurate and he gave me a four hour lecture he always was welcome in our house we used to have tea and eatables he even forgot the time so please remember a lot of uh, people among roman catholics orthodox jacobites marthomites and also st thomas evangelical church and csi and cni they are all theological radicals so that is the second group that claims to be christians but they do not believe in the bible the third is a group known as neo orthodox neo actually means new and uh, they use the word neo orthodox to show that uh, we are very very faithful actually the word orthodox means it comes from two greek words ortho and doxa ortho means straight from where we get the medical term orthopedics doxa means teaching and orthodox means those who teach the bible as it is neo orthodox they claim that we teach the bible as it is but we are slightly more uh, new what is the difference okay first of all 
what are the similarities they use all the words that we use you and i use in our everyday life bible word of god scripture salvation jesus jesus christ and uh, cross atonement all the words that we use but they redefine everything when they say jesus it does not mean lord jesus christ who was born in nazareth who lived for 33 and a half years and who died on the cross and who attained the resurrection on the third day no when a neo orthodox uses the word jesus he is not talking about that historical person he is talking about a certain experience in his life when he speaks about the word of god he is not talking about the bible he is talking about some kind of an emotional inspiration that he had and in this way the neo orthodox uses orthodox vocabulary but they redefine everything in such a way that they deny the meaning they deny the meaning of everything some of you maybe a few of you have heard a name karl barth uh, some of you the, the senior ones uh, those who are very very uh, devoted students of the bible may have heard the name of karl barth there are some people even among the brethren who are willing to die for the name of karl barth please remember karl barth did not believe that bible is the word of god he did not believe in the historical lord jesus he denied everything in the bible and still our people are crazy some of our people are crazy after karl barth he was a pakka neo orthodox there is an american ministry known as uh, trinity foundation they keep on publishing monthly papers very very analytical and thought provoking and they have published papers in great detail on karl barth to show that he was not a christian at all he was a neo orthodox so there are ritualistic christians there are radical christians they are neo orthodox a lot of roman catholics and orthodox and jacobites and marthomites and st thomas evangelical writers are neo orthodox writers then we come to the fourth category neo evangelical evangelical means those people who believe in salvation by grace through faith now if you believe in salvation by grace through faith then why add the title neo what is new in it salvation by grace through faith is a concept as old as genesis itself is a 6000 year old concept and how can man make it new or new and here is the secret actually they wish to claim that they are evangelicals because a lot of christians around us the genuine ones they are evangelicals and since the genuine ones are evangelicals these people want to pretend that they are also genuine but they are not truly evangelical and therefore they label themselves as neo evangelical 
I am sure there are people here uh, who have seen the American magazine Christianity Today. Christianity Today is one of the finest magazines. It started as an evangelical magazine, but eventually it became a neo evangelical mouthpiece. I'm giving some of these names because some of the senior ones would know these names and they might even be acquainted with these publications. So neo evangelicals use words like us, but they do not believe in the doctrine of creation. The neo evangelicals are very clear that they do not believe in, in six day creation. Very, very bluntly, they say, we do not believe in six day creation. Some of you who might be interested in Christian apologetics may have heard about American scientific affiliation. They are. <coughs> They are an organization devoted to Christian apologetics with one caveat. They do not believe in the doctrine of creation. They also do not believe in the inerrancy of the Bible. They also do not believe in salvation by grace through faith but they want to be known as evangelical. I am sure the senior ones here have heard the name of Bernard Ram, the great man who wrote Protestant biblical interpretation. That was the greatest book on Christian hermeneutics when I was in seminary. Eventually, he became a new evangelical who denied everything in the Bible. It started when he wrote a book, The Christian View of Science and Scripture, a horrible book. In that book, he completely denied the doctrine of creation and then his degeneration was fast. So, the new evangelicals want to assure you that they are evangelicals in faith, but they are not. They do not believe in the doctrine of creation. They do not believe in the inerrancy of the Bible. They do not believe in salvation by grace through faith. A lot of Marthomites in India are neo-evangelicals. So Marthomites have some radicals. They have some neo-orthodox and they have some neo-evangelical. Very, very few of them are evangelical and most of these Marthomites who are evangelical in their faith, they are evangelical because they came in contact with either Pentecostals or brethren or people in the local churches or people in similar congregational churches. Fifth category the evangelicals. Who are the evangelicals? They are people who definitely believe in salvation by grace through faith. And the meaning of an evangelical Christian is a Christian who believes in salvation by grace through faith. But they do not believe in the doctrine of six day creation. They believe that the Bible is full of errors. So what is common between them and us? Only one thing, that salvation is by grace through faith. Look, many Marthomites are evangelical because they came in contact with Christians in evangelical streams. A lot of Baptists, I'm not talking about the independent Baptists of Kerala, they are conservatives, but a lot of general Baptists, a lot of general Presbyterians, 
they are evangelicals because they believe in salvation by grace through faith nothing more about the bible they believe that bible is full of errors and then comes the sixth group the conservative or the fundamentalist who are the conservative conservatives are people who believe in salvation by grace through faith and also people who believe in six day creation and also people who believe in the inerrancy and infallibility of the bible and also people who believe that bible is the verbally inspired word of god verbally inspired means every word in these 66 books is there because the holy spirit wanted it there not that the holy spirit that every word there is spoken by God. The 66 books record what is spoken by God and also what is spoken by unregenerate man. It is also, it also records uh, speeches by Gentiles, by animal, by an animal or two, at least two animals. Verbally inspired means every word is there because God the Holy Spirit wanted it there. So the conservatives or the fundamentalists are people who believe in salvation by grace through faith, who believe in the inerrancy and infallibility of the Bible, and who believe that Bible is the verbally inspired word of God who believe that Bible is scientifically, historically, in every way, accurate. You may say, Brother Johnson, uh, conservative, I understand, but fundamentalist is a bad word, isn't it? No. Actually, uh, newspapers use the word fundamentalist in a bad sense. They speak about Muslim fundamentalists. What they want to say is Muslim extremists. Instead of extremist, newspapers loosely use the word fundamentalist. That is wrong. A fundamentalist is a person who holds on strongly to the fundamentals. People who believe in salvation by grace through faith, who believe in the inerrancy and infallibility of the word of God, who believe that Bible is free of error, who believe that when the Bible says creation is in six days, it was really creation in six days. They are conservative. They conserve the truths once and for all given to them. That is an expression from the epistle of Jude, once and for all, entrusted to us. They conserve it. They believe in all the fundamentals. They do not compromise. Okay, you may ask, uh, can you give me some examples? Yes. Uh, one of the best examples of conservative or fundamentalist churches is the brethren. But there are also independent Baptists, uh, particularly the ministry which is centered in uh, Chathanur. The, the independent Baptists, they are strictly conservative and fundamentalist. Then there are numerous congregational churches in India. For example, the group which is generally called local churches. They are conservatives and fundamentalists. There are also some Presbyterian churches, not all of them, but some Presbyterian churches such as Fundamental Presbyterian Church. They are conservatives and fundamentalists. This way, there are six different groups, all of them claim to be Christians, but only the conservative, the fundamentalist stream, only 
uh, they are Christians. All the others are imitations. All the others are fakes. That you should understand clearly before we go further in our bibliology. Dear friends, I am confident that you enjoyed listening to this question answer video by Dr. Johnson C. Philip. He would love to get your questions. Please post your questions in the comment box below this video and he will prepare a video reply for you. Please post only one question at a time and make it as detailed as possible so that Dr. Philip has no problem in understanding exactly what you mean. Also, please encourage this ministry by subscribing to this channel. Below this video, there is a subscribe button. Please click it. Also please click the bell icon near it to complete the process of subscribing. Thank you very much for being such an encouragement to our channel.